This is how you sharpen a knife, James. You see? One side and then the other. Little circles to take off the burr. You can always judge a fisherman by the way he keeps his knife. It belonged to my father. He got it from an old sea captain. Now it belongs to you. The taller you get, the further you'll see. James, come on, I'll race you to the fort. In a minute. James. for Galilee. Lots of places for sale. Great to be back. Hardware store going out of business? Because I took the day off to be with you. Tonight. Here's the stuff. Hey, big hey, guy. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'll get this. Let's get you inside. That whole strip on Main Street, uh, Left Court Pharmacy, the hardware store, Mary's Saloon. Now, these are your hinge properties. Now, I got all three of them under option. Hinge properties. Do you want it toasted? No, thanks. Yeah, hinge, like a door. The redevelopment swings this way or that. 
I don't know. Half of Main Street looks like it's going under. You really think you could do this? Well, where others see disaster, I see opportunity. It's good to have you home. I'm gonna fatten you up. I'm sorry, Mom. I just didn't fit in. Joseph liked that school, didn't you, Joe? Mm, good school. Not for me. We had a lot of hopes for you, dear. I know. Uh, and you spent a lot on tuition. Eleven thousand bucks. James, would you mind telling me what academic probation means? I didn't finish. I got incompletes. Incompletes? I'm sorry I wasted all that money. I know you worked hard for it. I think you don't know anything. But this is what I think. By the way, you're on probation here, too. You'll crack your books and haul yourself back to college in the fall. Dad, I, I don't... And in the meantime, I got your swell summer job. Yeah, So you just walk in here and take them? Yep. Local restaurant pays good money. Isn't that against the law? You a company man? Nope. But I think you should put those back. What are you doing in my shop, Kelly? Oh, uh, uh, just being friendly, eh? Uh, I'm a working man now, Vince. Yeah, fish and scallop. Oh. Uh. Dad. Oh, you need to sign these, Dad. Emily. James, what are you doing here? He's working. me for a minute. I can't. Sure you can. I'm the boss's daughter. Come on. So, how was college? Were you a star? <sighs> Far from it. Why? I don't know. I couldn't concentrate. Look out at my dorm window at this flat stretch of prairie. No ocean. Not even a lake. You were homesick. I guess. I mean, look at this. I've been looking at it all my life, and I can't wait to get out of here. Go where? Do what? Some place that doesn't stink of fish guts. Find myself a nice fella, settle down. Two and a half kids, backyard barbecue by the pool. Something like that. Not me. I want to stay right here. In Galilee? There's nothing here for us. I'm going to run my own boat someday. You're kidding, right? No. I don't know what my grandfather had, you know? What his father had before him. 
It's gone, James. I don't see it that way. You're dreaming. I mean, people are losing their boats to the bank. Even this fishery is hanging by a thread. Where others see disaster, I see opportunity. Emily. How are you? They wasn't half bad. Plenty of legals, not too many shorts. Looks like you're doing all right for yourself. Yes, sir. Nothing like a lobster with a one-trapped mind. He's so busy watching the grub in the kitchen, he doesn't even notice the trap. Eats his supper, but the only way out is backwards. Except he's got one little problem. His eyes point in the wrong direction, and he can't see how to hit the hole. Been too long, Mr. Bucket. How's it feel being a college boy? Square peg, round hole. Hard not in it. No, sir. You gotta love whatever you do, James. Take it from a happy lobster man. Well, I wish my dad felt like that. He got me a job working down at the fish plant for punishment. I suspect your heart's not in that either. Uh, I don't mind it. Now, me, I always knew what I wanted. Work alone in protected waters, sunrise every morning, hard hauling all day, sweat, sea spray. I keep it beautiful down there, garden to eat. You make it sound so great. A man could do a whole lot worse. Got a beautiful boat here, Mr. Bucket. Cool, huh? Mm -hmm. It started out as my senior thesis, and now it's the future of Galilee. Where are you going to get the money for this? Bank loans. I'll start with a few properties at a time. <laughs> are they drinking cappuccinos? Hey, 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 watch the attitude, little wait, brother. Wait, wait, I want to see how you're going to turn Mary Sloan into a firm. Yeah, bar. you know what your problem is? You lack vision. That's not true. Just because I don't have the same vision Dad wants me to have. He's only looking out for your future. And he's right, James. You're going to be nowhere without college. Why? Dad didn't go to college. He's not nowhere. Well, times have changed. you got to think differently now. The family needs you now, James. Don't let us down. Mr. Pfeiffer, would you give me a hand getting some stuff out of my car? Yes, ma'am. Better not be heavy, my back's sore. Get in. Emmy, I can't just leave. It's my birthday. Your father will kill me. It's lunch break. Come on, get in. <sighs> Where are we going? Our old playground. A boy? Could you take that hairnet off, please? Bring them back here. <laughs> How can you not love Galilee? I do. I just need to get out of here. I got my first kiss right over there. Yeah, I know. Joseph razzed me about it for months. Remember we pretended that you were a pirate and I was your prisoner? <laughs> Pretty dopey, huh? I liked it. Aren't you gonna ask me what I want for my birthday? Close your eyes. Close them. Mm -hmm. 
Happy birthday. Now you close your eyes. <laughs> Why? Surprise. That idea? No, it's just... Um, we've been friends since we were two. So? So, I'm, I'm just being practical. You want to be practical, James? Quit your job. Come on, don't get all huffy on Do it today. And make sure that my dad gives you your paycheck. Look, it's not a great job, but for the just summer... Just do it, James. Trust me on this. Is there something wrong with the plan? No questions, okay? It didn't last long. Something uh, else came up, sir. Oh, I hope it works out for you. So I had a Joe for me, Mr. Big Ideas. That's Joey. Well, I like dreamers and schemers. Up to a point. Thanks. Is anything going on between you and my daughter? No, sir. Good. Caught me right-handed, Sheriff. Should I put him back? It's up to you. I thought you worked on a scalp, Jag. Didn't they pay you enough? A little supplemental income can't hurt. You don't really need it, do you? Ah, just a little pin money is all. So which boat do you work on? Cape Celtic. I'm a deckhand. Anybody hiring right now? Can't say. Trouble with these offshore draggers. They won't take on a new man unless he's experienced. How's he supposed to get the experience? The old chicken and egg thing, huh? Yeah, you gotta know how to look at a boat. You wanna make a living on it. Okay? Like what? After a while, you learn how to read a rig. Wearing the cable, jerry built boom, bad splice. Anything's liable to let go and kill you. I never set foot on a boat that's painted yellow. Why not? Yellow boats go bad. Nobody knows why. Kelly Dobbs. James Frank. You serious about scalloping? Absolutely. My captain's name's Gil. I'll see if he'll talk to you. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's what I've been talking about. You got one, two, three rigs, cannibalized together. Nothing fits. Spit, wire, and a prayer. Cape Celtic. I thought that was your boat. It is. James! Why aren't you at work? I quit! What? I'm looking at fish scallops! You want to kill your mother with worry? Is that the idea? I can't hear you! Always like that? <sighs> yep. Come on. Man. 
Well, can't you use another one? Full crew, sorry. You don't like my work, you don't have to pay me. Let's see here, hands. So you've been fishing before? I worked on my dad's trawler when I was a kid. <laughs> Back in the old days, huh? I mean, when I was younger. Do I know your father? Russell Pfeiffer? He's a good man. Why aren't you working for him now? He's against me going out. Can't say he's a blame him. Let me see your knife. Uh, Kelly, shackle the warp. To me! All right, all right, I'll tell you what. You and a new man go clean out the whale's back, clean and tidy it real good, then we'll take a bearing. Thank you, sir. Don't call me that. Name's Gill. Marco! Go. Go with this guy, uh, James, right? Yes, sir. And clean out the whale's back. I want it spotless. Get out of here. What'd you say your name was? James! Heads up! Wellbone. Man, that reeks. You ever been out on a dragon before? No, you? Oh, lots of times. Uh, I need some fresh air. What are you doing up here? Get yourself into that wheel back, boy, and finish your job. Okay, Pfeiffer, you're on. The only reason I'm doing this is on account of that Marco kid might mess up. I'll pay you what I think you're worth this first trip out there. Sounds great. Thanks, Gil. You got your gear? Gloves, boots, scalp, knife, all that? Back home. Be here in the morning. Six o'clock. Woo! <laughs> What's the meaning of putting a job? I need to take a shower. That can wait. Emily said that the... Oh, you just listen to her, just like that. Son, you'll have to find a new job right away. I did. A scallop dragger. I'm going out on the Cape Celtic. You will do no such thing. We leave tomorrow. Is this how you thank people, James? Me and your mother have done all we can to make sure that your life and Joseph's life don't fall short. All I want from you is hard and honest work, and you can't even give me that. How could you say that? Fishing is hard and honest work. You do it. There are plenty of ways to make a decent living, son, and you're not even thinking of it. I want to be a fisherman. I'll get it. I'll get it. You're just talking about the summer, right? No. Yes. But what about college? What about law school? You used to talk about that all the time. No, Mom. You used to talk about it. It was never my dream. It was yours. You want us? But I, I... Don't you dare. Why can't he just let me decide for myself? No. Your father's not alone in this, you know. I made him promise me a long time ago that neither of you boys would go to sea. Young man, you want to drown yourself? Go do it at the beach. So we can find the body, have something to bury. Is that understood? I want my own boat. That's what I've always wanted. But to do that, I have to work on one first. Why can't anyone understand? Because it's a lousy idea. You know, once I get my plans off the ground, I'm going to need a lot of new help. 
Why don't you come work for me? No. I mean, thanks, Joe. But no thanks. Well, the offer's there if you change your mind. What's with that, anyway? He's flying off the handle of everything I do. He's yelling into the phone. He's under a lot of stress right now. More than usual. Listen. He told me to give you a lecture, but you probably don't need one. No, I don't. I'm not a kid anymore. Well... Tell him I gave you a hard time, okay? I hope you know what you're doing. Just be careful out there. slacking off. He won't get mad at you for working slow, but he'll rail on you if you lose your focus. Okay. We're gonna have a little fun with this Marco. Hey, boy! Yeah, you! Come here. Go into town, bring us back some scarlet powder. Where do I find it? All the stars carry it. They're having a sale. Don't come back here unless you got some, you hear me? I won't come back till I've got some. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> no such thing as scallop powder. Hey. Take no prisoners with that guy. It's him or you. This here is a knockout block. Uh, knockout key. Uh, now, Gil, he's a fair captain. As long as you don't cross him or waste his money. Reynolds, he's our help. 
Gets barking drunk ashore. But out here he's a steady. Watch your back around Pitsley. He's a madman. What's he have, rabies? Nah. He likes to chew on them busy white things. Can't be bothered plopping them in the water. Now, Franklin, he's a good cook. But he likes people that say please and thank you. Please and thank you. And there. He's got the most experienced fishing. But since he lost his upper plate, nobody can understand a word he says. <laughs> hey, Howard, stop that sweep in there. Get dirty again soon enough. It's good luck to sweep the deck before you start work. Hey, you met James. Remember, James, don't you say in pig. Huh? Say in pig when you're underweight, bad luck. How come? Don't know. Maybe it's just pigs don't swim. <laughs> and don't whistle. It brings the wind. And don't be putting the hatch covers upside down. And don't stick your knife in the woodwork. Just so you know. Okay. Thanks, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Ten degrees to starboard. Thoughts, Kelly. Daydreams. I hardly know where I am. Be that way for the first couple of days. Always is. But then you get too tired to keep thinking up new things and start running over the same dream over and over. After a while, you won't know what day it is anymore. And then everything just sort of fizzes out. You walk around like you're brain dead. Can't wait. Hey, Kelly. They're following us, Five. When the winch is weak, I think it's whale salt. Marco! No! You run the winch. Got it! Kelly, take your crew in for dinner. Aye. Come on. So what do you take? Coffee or iced tea? Uh, coffee, please. Coffee every day? Yes, please, every day. Cream, no sugar, please. You're a very polite young man. I like that. Thank you. I, I'm sorry, I... Sorry. You lying punk! You said you know how to operate the wind! Come on, huh? Come on, huh? Break it up. 
Guys, your nose? It's killing me. Why'd you tell Gil you could work the winch? I figured forward, reverse, how hard could it be? I'll let you in on a little secret. I've never been on a dragger before. Fight! Come here. Look over there. Sure is pretty. Imagine a life, never a day's work. Dinner in all the great capitals of Europe. Lady so-and-so hanging off your arm. Captain said this is a dry boat. Well, there I go again, breaking all the rules. You know, you drink too much. Do I drink because my dreams don't come true? Or do my dreams not come true because I drink? Which is it? Either way, you should cut down. I'll take it under advisement. What about you, Fife? What's your dream? I want a boat like this one. Stand up here on the prow, look out at the sunset, have a warm, calm feeling inside me, knowing it's my boat. I've wanted that ever since I saw my dad set sail in the Granite Bay. He just looked like he was on top of the world. Six hours on, six hours off. We're on.
Exile Franklin. Uh, please, thank you. Pitch Bishop Marco again. Here we go. He's a thief! Those are my gloves! I'm gonna kill you. I didn't steal nothing. I bought these myself. I think you did, huh? Leave him alone, Pitsley! I gave him the gloves. They're mine. Why don't you just back off? The good Samaritan, huh? Gil, check the gloves. Give me the gloves. DP, did you steal these gloves, boy? I need gloves. My hands are all cut up. Doesn't matter what you need. You don't steal my boot. Now get down below. What happens to you now is none of my business. What kind of game are you playing? I'm not. Take it easy, Bisley. Don't mess with me. You know where your trouble is? No killer instinct. There's one place on this crew, and you tried to save his neck. It's no good to anyone with his hands all cut up. Besides, I don't see the harm in helping. You like to do the right thing, don't you, Fife? Guess I got a soft spot for losers. You just a summer kid, Pfeiffer? Make a couple of trips and disappear as soon as school starts? No, I'm saving up for my own boat. Well, that'll take a while. I know. Okay, Pfeiffer. Next trip, you're on full share. Hey, Pfeiffer, Gil gave me a hundred bucks. He said it was fair. You think it was? Take what he gets. Yeah, I guess. Looks like only one of us is coming back. Hey, you wanted a lot more than me. You know, it might not hurt to think about another career, Marco. Find something you really enjoy doing. Vince Vogel filed for bankruptcy and took off. Everybody's checks bounced. He was probably the last good one he ever wrote. What a mess. Yeah, you should give Emily a call. She did you a good turn. I know. She likes you, James. <laughs> what are you doing in that suit? Hey, well, you're not exactly making a fashion statement. How are you ever going to get a date smelling like that, huh? No time for a date, big brother. So, did you get it out of your system? No. The prodigal son returns. Hey. Welcome home, son. How big was the catch? 520 bags of scallops. How much did I pay you? $1,000. Not bad for 10 days' work. Next time I'm on full share. What do you mean next time? We go out again on Thursday. Oh, really? 
Like talking to a stone, Joseph. If you could just see it, Mom, you'd understand. It's so beautiful out there. Like this one day we saw these whales breaching. I felt... I felt alive. You want to know what makes me feel alive? You. You and Joseph. I want that for you. I want you to have a family that you can come home to at the end of the day. Like you and Dad don't have a family. I mean, he's, he's gone a lot, but you still have a life together. We want something better for our kids. <sighs> I just don't understand why Dad's bragging on me so much. I mean, he acts like he hates his job. I don't believe him. I've been out there. I've seen it. Oh, you've been out there. You've been out there once. Your father's been a fisherman for 30 years, and he means what he says. He's trying to protect you, Jane. Just look around you. So many inscriptions lost at sea. Before you go out there again, just think about the cost. Inside, but my mom's a basket case. Do you want to go for a drive? Sure. Everyone's looking for my father. He's somewhere in Barbados. I'm so sorry, Em. Must be really hard on you. Yeah. He sure left me and my mom holding the bag. I know this doesn't help much, but I appreciate what you did for me. Hey, anything for a friend. So, was the fisherman's life everything you dreamed it would be? Yeah. Except... In my dreams, I got more sleep. I'm glad for you, James. I'm glad you found something you love. I have some news. Oh, yeah? You know Andrew Post? He's a pharmacist at Left Courts. He got a job in Toronto. He asked me to marry him. What did you say? I said yes. Seems kind of sudden. Well, we met last winter, you know, while you were away at school. It's something we've been talking about. I guess when you're ready for something, it just happens. I guess. Thanks for coming by. Sure. Um, see you around. I'll send you an invitation. bad about us.
bitchly decks on the <laughs> Hey, Pfeiffer, over here. Come have a seat, Pfeiffer. Yes, please, thank you. <laughs> man, oh man, he's at it again. Come on, tap in. You know, Pitsley had a wife once. Drove the poor thing crazy, accusing her of having an affair every time he went to sea. Was she? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, evening, Mr. Bucket. You two know each other? I watched this one learn to walk and talk. Oh, I'd say he's still doing that. <laughs> so how's life treating you, Bucket? Well, sometimes the old arthritis acts up in that cold water. I'm slowing down. Ah, oh, come on. You're in great shape. Been tending the same stretch of shore for 47 years. Maybe I should think about retiring. Maybe find somebody to buy my rig. Somebody who will be nice to her. What do you think you'd get for it? Haven't set a price yet. You'd be interested? You'd pay good money for a lobster, Rick? And the best shore lease going. Have you ever tried lobster? Out there all by yourself in the pouring rain, it's back-breaking work. Pain in the rain. That's what we like about it. <laughs> Pain in the rain. I like that. Give me a price. Are you serious? Yeah. I'll think on it. You serious about Bucket's lobster smack? Why not? You head out each morning into the sunrise, come home at the end of the day with tanks full of lobster. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you try hauling in a line of those heavy traps on a cold November morning. Then tell me what you think. I just hope I can save enough money before Mr. Bucket finds someone else. Ah, everything comes down to money, doesn't it? In college, I read about these Buddhist monks who had no money. Preach stuff about all you have to do is bend like a willow tree. Not too many willows out here. No. <coughs> but! Where are you going? Welcome to the Last Chance Motel. Nightcap! Yeah, room service. Yeah, send us up a bottle of champagne and uh, a little caviar. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, the penthouse. That's where you live? Yeah, far room with a view. Can't beat the price. Say. What if I wanted a spot on that lobster board of yours? Why would you? Well, you seem to have a bit of a future about you. It's refreshing. Well, we'd have to talk about your little friend there. Good night, Pfeiffer. I'm fine, I'm fine. I just, it is so awful, though, you know. I just don't know why God made my life so terrifying. But I'll, Come here. I'll be Come fine. Here. I'll be fine, You're darling. You're all right now. Yeah. Yes, with you here, I'll be fine. You're all right now. I'll be fine. Thank you. Hello, Mr. 
You want some coffee? Is Dad okay when you left? He seemed to be. I didn't know he still got them. I mean, that bad. Hasn't had one in a while. I was hoping maybe it wouldn't happen anymore. Jamie, he's worried about you. Your order's ready, Margaret. Yes, all right. Are you going out in that drag again? Love those trims. You okay, Fife? Years ago, a wave washed my dad overboard. No life jacket, nothing. Somewhere off Cape Sable. Nobody missed him. Thought he was in his bunk. Kept himself afloat for 10 hours before another fishing boat picked him up. The last hour before he was rescued, a shark swam circles around him, round and around. Sometimes it would give him little bumps, like this. I would have lost my mind. When they were finally pulling him out of the water, a shark swam from under the boat, bumped him in the chest so hard it broke three ribs. They got him back to shore and he was crying like a baby. Didn't stop for days. Still gets nightmares. A scar on his soul. Yeah. In Celtic! Prepare to be boarded! Coast Guard coming aboard. Let me do the talking. The rest of you shut up. You guys got anything, you better flush it down the head, Prano. What's going on? Looking for drugs, right? Gentlemen, we're going to be searching this vessel. You boys want to give me a hand with this hatch cover? All clear, please ship. Thanks, Captain. Ah! 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 Ah!
boss, cut that out. Come on, cut it out now. Uh, cut it out, I said. I said let him go. Yeah. Oh. Come around, daughter. saving a poor wretched soul <laughs> glad to have you back on board me too you know how they say that your whole life flashes in front of you mine didn't nothing there huh. i kept seeing all my old girlfriends as poor bearers at my funeral <laughs> hey, you got that right, eh? <laughs> I tell you, Five. If you hadn't saved me, I want to start treating my life with respect. Never done that before. I want to do something to change that. It's good, Kelly. I owe you some. You don't owe me anything. No. You saved me. I won't forget it. Well done, Joseph. Mm -hmm. Well done. Mm -hmm. Check it out, little brother. The bank gave you all this? <laughs> you keep your eye on your brother, James. He's got the keys to the kingdom. Yeah, keep your eyes on me. Keys to the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you do with it now? Well, I'm meeting with two different contractors, and then I'll compare their estimates. Actually, oh. uh, I've got a business plan of my own. Oh, really? I want to buy Mr. Bucket's lobster boat. Now, I thought about what you both told me about not having a family life, and that's not going to happen if I'm just running a lobster smack close to shore. How are you going to pay for it? 
Well, I'll have to keep working on the Camp Celtic until I have enough money. Oh, gee. What? What's wrong? It's just not feasible. Oh, I see. Only your plans are feasible. There's no future in the dreams. No future. And you're still on the water. And there's no safety in that. You just won't budge, will you? Whatever I come up with won't be good enough for you unless I put on a nice little suit and tie and I follow in Joseph's exact same footsteps. And what would be so wrong with that? You know, I was hoping. Yeah. I was really hoping that you guys would think it was a good idea. Uh, well, no. No, I said not this time. No. Do you understand? No. Who's he talking to? No, there's no more last time. No. Dad go. Last minute charter. Good night. Good night, son. Hey, boy. Come here. doing here mr. bucket could you tell this young man whose boat this is it's mine all right but if I were to give you the rest of the money right this minute whose boat would it be yours as long as you keep it afloat you want to work it with me I don't have the money I can't buy in I'll put the money down and then you and me will split the monthly payments and the cost of the licenses parts and gear I don't even have that yet. That's all right. Don't worry about it for now. I'll cover you. Why are you doing this for me, Kelly? I told you, you don't owe me. It's not the only reason. Maybe I like the idea of... Uh, the future. I think the man means what he says. How much are we talking about here? Can't let it go for less than 75000 and I've only had one. <clears throat> Thinking of giving these up, too. So what do you say? Partner. Hold out your hand. 
Scallop pearl. Give it to that little girl of yours. I found it at the start of my watch. Been carrying it in my mouth ever since. It's beautiful. Is that a girl, Piper? No. What about that pretty little thing down at the fish plant? She's getting married. Her loss. You okay, kid? Yeah. Pepper eating contest. <laughs> Till the storm quiets down. Five dollars a man. This will be a new experience for you. Pepper eating playoffs. Mano a mano. Three for Pitsley. Three for Kelly. Go. <laughs> Pitsley wins. He's eating that fizzy stuff paid off, eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, fellas. Storm's let up. Back to work. Uh... Work.
you two. There he is. Come on, Ed. Oh. Oh, thank God you're home. Oh. Are you all right? Here, get this off. Kelly, uh, my friend, he got killed. Oh. What happened? Where? On the boat, in an accident. Were you there? Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Now, as we walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Kelly Dobbs was a good man. Well, that's it, I guess. We're all going over to Mary's to give Kelly a farewell send-off. You want to join us? No, thanks. You ever have a friend die on you before, son? No. Grandparents, but not friends. It messes you up for a while. You know, Kelly looked up to you, James. I think he saw you as his last chance to finally pull it all together. I guess he didn't get that chance. You gonna be keeping up the payments on your own? Figured you'd just keep Kelly's money and sell it to someone else. No, sir. That's not what Kelly wanted. He said if anything ever happened to him, the down payment was yours. He even gave me a couple of extra payments to cover you until you got on your feet. I can't believe he did that. And it wasn't just about him owing you either. It was about wanting to do something for a friend. How much is the balance? 35,000. And I can't take less than 2,000 a month. Business is business. Yes, sir. If you prefer, you could give me $1,000 a month until the day I die. Just remember, my mama lived to be 107. <laughs> Come on over to the boat later, and we'll draw up a contract. I lost my steering. A wheel and rudder locked. I hit the rocks, and uh, so I got in my dory and uh, rode ashore. Why wasn't your crew with you? I sent them off to lunch. I uh, stayed because I wanted to check the engines. They'd been overheating. Now, officer, can I get out of these wet clothes so we can continue this later? Okay, Captain. Thank you. I don't get it. it. Doesn't make sense. I mean, don't you think it's weird? Lock steering, no crew. I asked him one too many times. What are you talking about? It wasn't just an accident. What are you saying? I'm saying you don't just run your boat up on the rocks after 30 years of fishing. Get in. Would you mind telling me what's going on? Dad's been running drugs. Running drugs? What are you talking about? It started when I went to college. He'd make runs to pay off the bills and keep out of debt. I can't believe Dad would do anything like now that. Listen, James, I felt the same way when I found out, but you gotta realize something. After a few runs, he tried to stop and they wouldn't let him. 
Those phone calls, right? Yeah, threats to him, us, and mom. So he's a crook. You're a liar. All you talk about hard and honest work, you call running drugs honest? Leave him alone, Jamie. He's been through enough. I didn't do it for myself, young man. I never asked you to do that for me. Jamie, stop. You knew too, didn't you? Everyone knew except me, and everyone just stood by him and made me out to be the bad guy. Hey, it's over, James. It's over. Over? You crashed your boat and that wipes away everything you've done? I did it so you wouldn't have to, young man. Do you understand? And I'm not going to stand here and apologize to you. You know, Dad, I've been in love with the sea ever since I was a little boy. And who are my role models? You, Grandpa, and you. All my life, I wanted what you had. I mean, I figured there must be something really wonderful out there if he kept you away from us so much. When I said I wanted to be a fisherman, I wasn't defying you. I was saying I wanted to be like you. At least I did. Motel. Hello, room service. Yeah, send us up a boil of champagne and uh, a little caviar. Right.
Hey, Pfeiffer. I've been trying to call you. What about? Come aboard. Listen, Pfeiffer, there's been a change in plans. We're not going out on Friday? Actually, we're going out tomorrow, but I think maybe you should take a vacation for a couple of weeks. Why? You can come out with us the next time. I can even advance you some money if you need it. No, I, I think I deserve an explanation. I just want you on shore this trip. You said I did good work, Gil. You put me on full share. I don't get it. Sorry. Pfeiffer, wait. You might as well have the same choice as everybody else. A different kind of trip, James. Not exactly above board, if you follow me. We're gonna have to make a pickup and delivery along the way. How much? How much a share? About 10,000 apiece. Up to you, son. We'll leave at 5 a.m. I'll be there. Miss Chat, the reception. I just. I couldn't. I'm sure she and the pharmacist have been very happy. Honey, if she couldn't accept you for who you are, she wasn't the right girl for you anyway. I should go get ready. I have to be at the boat before dawn. I thought it was next week. No, it's changed. We leave tomorrow. Jamie? The things you said to your dad really hurt him. Why don't you talk to him? I've got nothing to say to him. You still plan on buying that lobster boat? Will you promise me something? Will you just promise me you won't go out by yourself? I'll try. No. Will you just say the words? I promise. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
beautiful, beautiful spot. I was up there once. I wasn't all that impressed. Oh, you were just there in the wrong time. Such a lovely servant. No Barbados, I'll tell you that much. Waiting for you, James. I'm not going. now, son. Well, I still want my own boat, Dad. So, I guess Mr. Bucket's not gonna retire as soon as he thought. 